Hi, how you doing? In this video we're going to stick with our current Sunday tradition of listing five things, only this time they aren't pictures, they're actual tangible objects. Things that have some kind of special connection to the pugilistic era. About halfway between Guildford and the south coast, just across the county boundary from Hampshire into West Sussex, sits the small market town of Petworth, home to one of the grandest and most impressive stately homes in the country. Petworth House has many things of note, including a 700-acre deer park, modelled by Lancelot Capability Brown, an art collection containing paintings by Turner, Constable and Van Dyck, among others, a terrestrial globe from 1592 by Emery Molyneux, thought to be the only one in the world in its original state, and one statue in a world-class collection of sculptures. It depicts a man stood in a boxing guard with his fists clenched. He's shirtless with an impressive physique. He wears tight-fitting breeches and sandals and has close-cropped hair. Inscribed on the base are the words Athleta Britannicus. Sculpted from a single piece of white marble by John Charles Felix Rossi in 1828, it's thought to depict none other than Tom Cribb. In 1792, when Daniel Mendoza claimed the title of Champion of All England, he became one of the first true sporting celebrities. Unlike the champions before him, he was neither able nor willing to adopt the ways of the fancy and curry their favour. He was proud of his heritage as a working-class Jew, and because of this, he gained the love and support not just of the rich boxing supporters in the capital, but the entire nation. Daniel Mendoza went from being a surprisingly successful boxer to the biggest brand in the country. Pamphlets about Mendoza were printed to sell, mass-produced images were available everywhere, and for those people who wanted something a little more longer-lasting, you could buy a copper alloy token bearing Mendoza's likeness. Engraved by C. James and sold by the political commentator and merchant Thomas Spence in 1790, hundreds, if not thousands, of these were made, and they regularly appear in auction houses for sale. The British Museum in London have several in their reserve collection. On the 24th of August 2016, an episode of Antiques Roadshow aired on the BBC. Unusually, for me, I was watching. For those of you not familiar with the show, the format's pretty simple. The film crew turn up at a pre-advertised location with a bunch of antiques experts, and people bring their family heirlooms to see if they might actually be valuable. Usually they aren't, but every now and then, something stunning shows up. Like the man who bought a dice shaker at a garage sale and it turned out to be an enamelled Fabergé vodka cup. Anyway, I remember nothing about this episode apart from the moment when they unveiled a pair of large, soft-looking, handmade boxing gloves that were used by none other than Lord Byron when he trained with John the Gentleman Jackson. When Tom Cribb retired from boxing, he took up residence as the landlord of the Union Arms, where he lived out his days in the pub that rapidly became known as Cribb's Parlour. Eventually, it was renamed the Tom Crib in his honour, and is now filled with boxing memorabilia. When the brewery Shepherd Neem took over the pub, they completely refurbished it, including taking down the surprisingly large painted metal signs that had hung for years on the London streets. In a bizarre twist of fate, one of those signs now sits above a bookcase right here in this office where I'm filming today. In Brompton Cemetery stands a large monument, some ten feet tall, that shows a large lion resting atop a stone plinth. It stands in memory of a man who only ever fought three times and lost one of those fights. But a man who became one of the most influential in the world of boxing. A man who bridged the parallel world of the fighters and the fancy. Friend to the greatest and most powerful men of the realm, he fought his whole life to keep boxing respectable to stop it returning to the mess it had been when he was born. A fighter, a second, a bottle holder, a trainer, a backer, and of course a champion. Described by Piers Egan as the fixed star of the pugilistic hemisphere, and by Lord Byron as the emperor of pugilism, the memorial was funded by public donations for one of the greatest men of the pugilistic era, John the Gentleman Jackson. So now, over to you. Those are my five things. Are there any that I've missed off this list that you'd put on your own list? Stick something in the comments and let me know. And maybe, if you haven't already, subscribe. That'd be nice. And to those of you still here at the very end of the video, Fight Team!